Hello everyone, I am Squallcasting, and I'm bringing you another game of StarCraft 2. Now in this particular match, we do have Confracto as the Red Terran, and his opponent is the devious Kyumnian. I have no idea how to say that, so from now on he is the Blue Proton, that's all I'm going to call him. Now, Confracto is a friend of mine. He submitted me this replay to be casted. And I'm going to speed things up a tiny bit because I know how his games tend to go. And you will see what I mean by that. And I'm going to give you a preview. His most recent Real ID broadcast was, Time to go make some unwitting player cry. So, uh, I will say that he doesn't necessarily play to win as much as he plays to have as much fun as possible playing the way he wants. And you'll, you'll see what that means in a bit. So I'm just going to speed it up a tiny bit because I know this game is a long-ish one. And I'll slow it down if there's anything significant happening at any point. So Blue's going to scout on up, check out what's going on. Good Factor has indeed finished his wall, starting to get his gas. Get damn marines, get that orbital command, and throwing down a second gas very fast. So, this this is a hint of what is to come. You will see. Uh, looks like we might have a little bit of an attack coming out here, so I'll slow it on down a bit. Does have three uh, zealots here at this watchtower. Looks like he wants to press up and try to do a bit of damage. But contractor throwing down a bunker, so he will be very adequately defended any problems at all. Factory going down. We have a reactor going onto the barracks. Zealots poke up and realize there's nothing they can do, so they run away back home. And wow, Blue built quite a few zealots. Very zealot heavy. Just now getting its gases, so looks like he wanted to deal some damage, maybe kill him, but when there's supply depots and SCVs, they are SCVs behind repairing them, not much is going to happen. And Confractor just throwing out a missile turret at the front just to be safe from Dark Templar and similar shenaniganry. Putting out a tank and getting siege mode. So, a very defensive posture from him thus far. We'll see if at, at some point he wants to expand. He certainly has the minerals too, but we'll see if he chooses to do that. Blue, on the other hand, getting his robo facility down. A single scan goes down just to check on that tech. And we do have Warp Gate coming out now and being Chrono Boosted, so a little, little bit behind on that tech because he went for that very heavy Zealot aggression and accomplished basically nothing. And yep, so we do have a Command Center going down, so he's going to expand. All very typical stuff. Now, while all this, you know, kind of passiveness is going on, I'm going to tell another StarCraft story because I love StarCraft. Now... If you didn't play the original StarCraft, um, there was StarCraft, and then there was StarCraft Brood War. And Brood War came out, I think it was a year after the original StarCraft release, and came with a bunch of new units, new campaigns, new everything. It was awesome. And one of the new units they added was the Dark Templar. Now, of course, this is in StarCraft II Vanilla, but for StarCraft Brood War, that was pretty darn cool. Whoa, permanently cloaked and kills everything sounds good to me and if you took two dark templar and merged them together they became a dark archon not a regular archon a dark archon now the dark archon was a dedicated caster it had no attacking abilities it had only spells it had feedback which was very similar to the uh, high templar feedback blue taking a bit of a hidden base here and um in that it removes energy and deals damage based on the energy removed and uh it had maelstrom which was like an incapacitate, everything in a certain area became immobilized, unable to move, attack, etc. Um, it would not hit burrowed units, but that was the only exception. It would force cloaked units out of cloak, I believe. And the third ability, which was of course my favorite, was mind control. And so, if you wanted, you could, uh, oh, looks like there was a bit of a pause there. And so, if you wanted, you could mind control, say, an SCV at Protoss. Thanks. Okay, Blue insulting him for... Oh. I see what happened there. Blue paused without saying anything. Contractor asked how long it would be. And while some people might see that as a little bit rude, like it. 
Personally, if somebody pauses and they don't say how long they're pausing for or why, I'm gonna unpause it. <laughs> I'll give a countdown. Anyway, and now, here we go. Ravens. Lots of ravens. And we have... Hang on, let's slow this down so we can take a look. Durable materials. So extends the timer of auto turret, seeker missiles, and point defense drones. We have hunter seeker missile. And we have raven energy. And the raven energy is actually going to finish just before the ravens do. So that's very nicely timed. I like that. So this is indeed what I was talking about. He loves playing with ravens. Which are similar to Dark Temple on that. They do not have an attack ability. But while he builds his ravens, I will continue my story. So back when I played StarCraft Brood War, I kind of sucked at the game. Which meant that my logic was very simple. How do I win? I build the best unit and as many of them as possible. What was the best unit? The carrier, of course. Because it makes other units that go attack for you. And the enemy shoots at these units that are basically free. And then they run back and get repaired. And then fly out and shoot at the enemy again. So, I of course mass carriers. But in one game, I had a stroke of brilliance because, see, I was going up against a Protoss opponent. And I said, well, if he's smart like me and goes mass carrier and I go mass carrier, maybe what I can do is have some Dark Templar or Dark Archons, I should say, and then be able to maybe mind control his carriers. So yeah, we, we went into battle, he had slightly more carriers than me, but I had a handful of Dark Archon on the ground, mine controlled a bunch of his carriers, which are of course an enormous investment, I won the battle very easily. So that was my stroke of genius in StarCraft Brood War, me figuring out the carriers only metagame. So yeah, I think I'll return to this game now, so Confracto is indeed taking his third blue, as you may have noticed, took this hidden expo and starting to build out some void rays. And has some colossus back at his main base, so <laughs> three forges at the front door. And he's not gotten any upgrades, so that's kind of a hilarious wall. Could have just have easily have made those gateways to wall it and then actually had a use out of them. Maybe he wants to get those upgrades yet eventually, but hasn't chosen to yet. And so planetary here, planetary here. You can see what sort of style he goes for. He gets tanks and bunkers, bunkers, missile turrets, planetary fortresses. And so he just plays really defensively to frustrate opponents and then ravens. So I will speed it up a little bit more again until we see what happens with these ravens. And as you can see, he's still producing ravens. And this many ravens, well, as a group, they accumulate energy really fast. I'll take a look at the energy cost. So, auto turret is 50, so each one can spawn four auto turrets. Point defense drones are 100, so they each can spawn two. And seeker missiles cost 125. So, yeah, I'm just going to uh, keep an eye on damn Ravens. Hopefully, he will indeed do something eventually. Blue continuing to mass void rays. This is quite a few void rays. And the thing to bear in mind is Ravens do not have an attack ability. So. We'll see how Confracto plays this. I'm sure it'll be entertaining. Blue taking another hidden expo. Just assigned to hidden expo it up everywhere. And his economy is probably pretty terrifying at this point. Or it's not because Confracto has mules. <laughs> ah, I think I'll just speed up just a little bit more. Confracto does get a bead of that base as well as the a lot of void rays does is put down a sensor tower in his base so that way he can see if units are coming in. Always a fantastic thing to do. And it looks like we have the Raven Mist move out as my computer drops frames because that's way too awesome for it to handle. Oh, okay. Just pos positioning them over there for the time being. Continuing to build Ravens. <laughs> why not? Oh, what do we have here? Ravens moving in and harassing. I missed that happen. Okay, so it looks like he has more than one group of ravens starting about. That's kind of cool. He did drop down some auto turrets, but it doesn't look like he killed anything. He did at, le at the very least deal a bunch of damage to his void rays. Wait, wait a second. There's a lot less void rays than there were before. I feel I have to back up and take a look at that. So I'm just going to mash the B button for a while. And see this lovely loading screen. I don't want to bring up the replay bar because I'm very averse to spoiling people about how long actually is. Okay, so
so I think I've got to have, okay, so here's the ravens, and, yeah, there's a lot of void rays there, so let's see what happens here, oh, yum, oh, <laughs> and throws down a couple auditors just to defend his retreat, and gets away with losing basically nothing, just a tiny bit of damage on those ravens, used up a lot of energy, but killed a lot of void rays, and I just want to take a look at this, look at that, that was their first significant battle, <laughs> So, yes. So, we'll see how blue responds. Red is going to swing back up. I'm going to try to keep a better eye on the mini-map just to be aware of those uh, murders of ravens moving around. Blue looking like he wants to push forward with these void rays a little bit. In fact, I will be aware of it as soon as I cross that little line there. And yep, here we go. So, the void ray is going to push on up. Missile turret murders the observer. doesn't murder the observer. There are some missile turrets there to soak fire and distract, but... Look at that. <laughs> WTF. Blue completely baffled at how effective secret missiles are against packed void rays. He feels this is not... This is stupid. Those were his words, not mine. And lots of missile turrets. And another secret missile goes down, softens them up a lot, and the missile turrets are going to be able to finish those off with the take a look at the unit loss tab so as you can see it's grown just a tiny bit <laughs> and red still hasn't lost very much and just still continuing to turtle hard looks like he has more ravens going out this should be enjoyable scans ahead just to check what there is sees there's nothing and here we go now notice how fast all these go down. He's really figured out how to uh, queue up lots of waypoints to throw them all down quickly. A single point defense drone going down to defend the altar. And look at how long that lasts. That lasts 240 in-game seconds because of that durable materials upgrade. So they kind of hang around forever. And since Blue has nothing to defend this because it's a hidden expo, it's just going to die for free. Looks like he wants to push up a little bit with some stalkers, but that's not going to work out. Blue, this is not the wisest decision you've made today. Tries to blink in, but his entire army evaporating. Ravens are going to position themselves here, have completely hollowed out this base. Scanning ahead just to check what's there. I don't even get a shot off, this is dumb. <laughs> Oh man, so these auto turrets are going to start picking off the probes down there. And do note, they do have a two armor upgrade, which comes from the, um, uh, what's it called, durable building materials upgrade. It's on the NG bay. And they also have seven range, which comes from the high sec auto tracking. And yeah, those auto, the, these free units, they only cost energy, are just going to kill everything. Blue, not too happy with the state of the game. Feels that um, ravens are clearly overpowered. <laughs> oh man. And yeah, so he's losing pretty much all his tech. All he really has left here is his Stargate tech with a bunch of stuff. Losing gateways. He does have a number of phoenixes now. That could be some trouble. But they're running over all the auto turrets. Ooh, we'll see though. Ra these ravens have no energy left and they are considered light. But Blue decides to fall back. He could have potentially killed those all, but for all he knew, there were eight more Hunter Seeker missiles waiting for him to murder him. Let's have to take a look at how much damage those do. Deals up to 100 area damage. That's that's pretty significant. That's more damage than, uh... <laughs> how long do they last? And look at that. Just queuing it all up before he even gets there, so that way he doesn't have to have the highest APM of all time. Five minutes. <laughs> and yeah, they do indeed last five in game minutes, if my math is correct. And Blue Rage is out of the game. So, there's my little showcase of Raven fun madness, funness, finality. Ravens are fun. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do subscribe, like, and leave comments in the comment section below, and I will see you guys later.